For most people, getting eaten alive by a shark is the stuff of nightmares. But for one Australian man, it actually happened. Eric from New South Wales suffered a shark attack in 2007, and he's reflected on his near-death experience in disturbing detail. Thankfully, he survived the brutal attack, which saw him struggling in the animal's mouth for two minutes. He was able to survive partly thanks to the fact he was wearing a lead-lined vest, but he did end up inside the animal's throat at one stage of the attack. After surviving the incident at the time, Eric also said that he attacked the animal's eye and was able to escape. Half my body was in its mouth. I felt down to the eye socket with my two fingers and poked them into the socket, he said. The shark reacted by opening its mouth and I just tried to wriggle out. It was still trying to bite me. It crushed my goggles into my nose and they fell into its mouth. I've never felt fear in my life like what I felt in the jaws of that white pointer. I went straight into its mouth, front onwards. Half my body was in its throat. It was like being in a dark cave. Describing how he was able to come up to the surface, with the shark following him in the water, saying, It was just circling around my flippers, round and round in tight circles. The big round black eye, five inches wide, was staring straight into my face with just not one hint of fear, of any boat or any human or any other animal in the sea. While great white sharks are some of the most amazing and feared predators in the world, very few of us will ever see the legendary fish in real life. The great white shark may be one of the most obsessed over predators in the world, but very few of us will ever see the legendary fish in real life. This is not because of their size. They are in fact smaller than other creatures, including the whale shark, the largest fish in the world, nor their bloodlust, but for another, more tragic reason. When great white sharks have been held in captivity in the past, they've almost always succumbed to a swift end. The first time one of these behemoths was put on display was in the former LA tourist attraction, Marine Land of the Pacific, back in 1955. The poor animal didn't last a day. Since then, a series of attempts have been made to house the sharks in oceanariums, but none have worked. Either the great whites have been released back into the wild, or if they've stayed in captivity, they've died within days. California's Monterey Bay Aquarium holds the record for publicly displaying a great white shark as the only public aquarium in the world to have successfully done so for longer than 16 days. It exhibited six great white sharks in its open sea exhibit between 2004 and 2011, caring for one for a total of 198 days. However, maintaining suitable conditions was no mean feat. It relied on a 10.6 meter, almost 35 feet deep tank, which had been specially designed for open ocean animals and held 15 million liters, 4 million gallons of water, local news outlet The Mercury News reported at the time. Nevertheless, Monterey Bay closed its Great White Shark exhibition in 2011, both because of the costs and resources involved in maintaining the operation and because the predators had grown increasingly aggressive in captivity. Some of the white sharks incurred injuries during their time in the tank and killed other animals in the exhibit, Vox reports, and the final shark died for unconfirmed reasons immediately following its release. So why is it so hard to keep these incredible fish alive away from their natural habitat? First of all, it is impossible to keep an adult great white shark in a tank. These reach an average of 15 feet in length, which makes the very act of moving them an almost insurmountable challenge. The six great whites displayed by Monterey Bay were all babies, the first of which was four feet four inches long and less than a year old when they caught it, making it simpler to move and care for. Furthermore, when they're young, they feed on fish, but as they get older, they transition to feeding more on mammals, meaning older great whites are much harder to cater for. But perhaps most significantly, sharks, like all fish, need to have water continually passing through their gills in order to get oxygen, as Vox notes. And whilst most species can open and close their mouths to pump water through, great whites don't do this. To breathe, they need to move forward through the water with their mouths open. That's why they start to weaken as soon as their movement is restricted. The fearsome predators are used to traveling long distances, moving as they please, eye stock. In addition, great whites and other pelagic sharks, meaning ones that live far from land, are accustomed to swimming long distances without obstructions, changing directions whenever they see fit. 
This means that walls cause them a huge amount of confusion and distress when they're put in a tank. This issue particularly blighted Monterey Bay sixth white shark in 2011, which was seen constantly bashing its head against the glass sides. The aquarium therefore decided to release it after 55 days, but its tracking tag revealed that it died shortly after returning to the wild. Monterey Bay hasn't housed another great white shark since. For more awesome shark-related content, please consider subscribing to my channel.